surprised still. I'm still surprised. Yeah. But no, um, after what we saw today, I mean, anybody, like you said, Jimmy, you can't look at the Celtics and, and not even consider them at least a dark horse to upset some, to, to upset a, a, a couple of teams in the playoffs. Like, if you want to say that, okay, that's fine. But if you want to say the Celtics shouldn't be mentioned at all, then you're missing out on a whole lot. And I say that because 24 hours ago, I saw national heads talking about the, some of the best teams in the Eastern Conference. Magic Johnson, matter of fact, talking about the best teams in the Eastern Conference. Uh, you know, during the uh, the ABC ESPN broadcast, did not mention the Celtics as even a dark horse to to, to disrupt things. I hope right. his stance has changed after seeing this game because not only is Jason Tatum put himself in the conversation as one of the better players, best players in the NBA right now, but he went toe to toe with one of the greatest scorers in the NBA. He went toe to toe with Kyrie Irving in the mix as well in, in yep. this atmosphere. And look, unlike we see what we've seen in the past, there was no no, no uh, a lot of hugging and dapping up before this one. Yes, and there was one, business trip, one quick exchange, one of those. You know, you're in the layup lines, and it was a coincidence that Durant's coming as you're coming, sort of eye contact, lock for two yep. seconds, quick hug, see you later, and that was yeah. it. No daps, no words exchanged, and that was the mindset that Jason Tatum had coming into this one. Now, Jalen Brown, I think, did a really good job of implementing himself when they needed him. You know, obviously the three-pointer, like you talked about, Jimmy, was huge. But also he was sort of the glue guy in the sense of getting the ball to work its way around. I thought he did a really good job of that. And he needed a taste of this matchup. I know some people may have not have been crazy about seeing him in this game. We all know he's not 100%. But I think he needed a taste of this, uh, of this, right? In case these two teams do meet in the playoffs, I think, well, when you couple the fact that he wasn't even out there for, for that playoff series last season, I think he just needed this. Yeah, under his belt to, to move to move forward. That's a good point. Be, I don't to disagree. be part of a game like this, and also for the Celtics, for the Celtics' case, John. You know, they needed to see what this looks like. You know, we would have win or lose, we wouldn't have had a chance to see what it looks like for the defense to be full throttle with Jalen Brown and them, even if he so isn't one hundred percent. They needed him. So it's I, a fair I thought point. it was good. It's a fair point. It's just a risk reward situation because we've seen it with Jalen now over the past couple of seasons kind of not being right returning from injury he admitted last time he rushed himself back mm -hmm. they don't play again until wednesday this felt like a really easy skip to get him a full week and a half off and then come back and not worry because you're really his health in the playoffs is all that matters seating almost doesn't even matter anymore um so yeah it's a nice statement thing it's good for the team which is great i'm going to bring in bobby to uh here but josue i wanted to when it gets bobby's take josue the one thing you mentioned i wanted to get a uh, a word in on was the um the 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 observation you made after the game quick dap and move on um we've talked about that a ton and i i this felt I, during the game we were watching and i was like is this going to be like lakers in the pandemic year you know and you were out there for that game in la and we've we've referenced it a million times yeah where tatum puts up a monster game it's on national television they come up short but after the game it feels like they won because tatum scored a lot and then they whatever and um, in LA. Randy, yeah. yeah and grandy was on a podcast um uh celtic speed podcast this week and he talked about kind of tatum's ascension and one thing he mentioned was um you know, he's got to get to the point where he's no longer satisfied with the uh, with the praise and adulation coming from superstars like Kevin Durant. So much was made at the end of last season in the postseason when Durant went on that podcast and he kind of put Tatum up on a pedestal and said, the guy's here. He's awesome, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And we talked about that a ton. But what you want is, now nah, I don't want to be liked by you. I want to beat you. And we always put KD as almost like that unreachable benchmark of who you want to see Jason Tatum ultimately be, which is a, I don't care what you throw at me. I'm just going to score whenever right. I want to, right. from wherever I want to. <laughs> and that's ultimately when he gets into that level and that conversation, then he, then he becomes that, right. you know, and he's got other yeah. elements to his game too. KD's doing right. it without anything else, without having to worry about any other aspects of his game, even though he's a decent defender, probably more than he gets credit for. But on scoring alone, KD has elevated himself into the top five all-time conversation. Tatum, you, you can't be KD, but if you can be a guy – anywhere close to that level offensively like you've arrived like today was a right it, he did that play he made late when he kind of split the defenders and he got to the rack i have no oh, idea man. how he did that the yeah. decisiveness he had all game how quickly he got downhill how quickly he passed out of doubles that last possession the wherewithal to take that hockey assist to give it to marcus or was it to marcus yeah. jalen for that three with zero time on the clock was incredible like that these are things he was not doing earlier in the year when when he was catching some heat he was dribble 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 slow 
low ISO, setting people up, letting the defense set and taking shots. Totally different guy right now. Right. And, and he talked about a couple of weeks ago or a few weeks ago, um, you know, the, the fact that everyone is looking at him and Brown to sort of lead the, to lead the team and what are they going to do between the two of them. But then this past month or so, when we've seen this huge turnaround, Jason Tatum realized that we have to bring everyone with us. And I think he's starting to show that over and over again, even though he did put up obviously 54 points. He was assertive. He got his clearly. But he also looked for other guys as well. I thought he did a great job of, of passing the ball, making sure it swung around. And then, like you said, John, making those decisions quickly, you know, knowing that, okay, this this is the angle that I have. I'm going to take it right now, and I'm not going to waste any time. I'm not going to look around. I'm going to go straight to the rim and attack, you know. Instead of going back and reverting to three-point shots, easier looks. No, he kept encouraging that. He kept, uh, you know, forcing the issue, but in a good way, getting to the free throw line. What do you have, 17, 17 attempts? You know, like this is – he could, he could do this more often, but seeing it, again, on this stage, a national te televised game against the Nets, against Durant, against Kyrie, he needed that, and so did the Celtics. Yeah, I think the difference, you guys kind of hit on it, but the difference Tatum now is that he's not playing against these guys like like he's their kid. Like he's just like getting like a pat on the head, like, hey, good job, kid. Like, you know, you might, you might right. make it in this league. Like he's playing against them like man to man, you know, and he – almost like expecting to go, you know, toe to toe with these guys, not just like John said, happy to be there or happy to have a good performance or happy to get acknowledgement from these guys after the game. And of course they see everything that's, that's out there, good and bad. So I don't expect that to change, but not caring as much about it. Not, not relying so much on the praise and, and feeding off the negative feedback, just going out there and just fuck, sorry, go out there and just be like a badass. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just kill dudes. And that's kind of what it, what it felt like. I think you edited yourself out and then you said sorry. Well, have you yeah, ever, have, have you guys ever, I'll ask you guys a question, you know, to be honest, like everyone's like, yeah, Tatum's got skills, you know, he can score, he's blah, 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 and this and that. Have you ever based off of his, his demeanor, his attitude, the other aspects of his game, helping his teammates uh, be better and doing all of the other things necessary to win? Have you ever felt he had all of that? Uh, to the to, to be the number one on a championship level team uh, prior to very recently have you had that vibe about him everything I feel about Tatum was a projection which is when he gets better at this and when he does that and if he's more consistent and if he can do that and if he can do this which while it's possible given someone who's as good as he is it was not a guarantee you know some people just don't. Some people right. are it was... just some people are just <clears throat> scorers, and that's good enough. A person who scores as well as Jason Tatum does is a Hall of Fame player if he does that over the course of his career. That's really, really good. It's the question is, well, is he in that convo? Can he do that mm -hmm. stuff? And like until recently, did you feel that? So I think to an extent, yeah, because I think we saw it in flashes, but for me, the difference between like a great top tier player and another you know, super talented basketball player, it's the, me it's the mental side of things. You have to really, really, really want to be great and maintain that level of consistency over a number of years or seasons. And that's going to generate winning and that's going to generate like a winning culture. So prior to that, I mean, I thought, I thought it was just uh, more of a maturity thing and a mental, we had to find that mentality of wanting to be, you know, yeah, a killer they're, out there. They're not wanting, wanting to be the, the best. captain, all exactly, of that stuff. Exactly. Right. So, now, over the last, I would say, two months, right around the time where this winning streak started, I am starting to see a difference in his, like, leadership ability. So that, to me, is what's going to take him to, you know, the top of the top. And a game like today just shows that. I mean, Joe Sway has always been a huge, huge Tatum supporter and guy, and I think that's because we've seen what he's capable of in spurts, but it's just more of can you maintain that level of consistency? And bring right. the other thing we said too. One more thing is you have to make others around you better. You just can't be about exactly. dropping, dropping fifty points and then taking the L. But he that's did. He did have high assist totals, but he had a, he had he had. Uh, I, I would imagine a lot of secondary assists if I had to look it up, but it was just moving Potential. the ball when it needs. <laughs> it was moving the ball when it needed to be moved at Potential the right assist. time to keep the offense going, whether it ended up in an assist or not. It was he made the right. It's all about making the right decisions. Yeah. Um, as many as much as possible. Even the game what it uh, needs. And, yeah. Go ahead, Josue. No, I'm just gonna say I think that's what what worried me, right? Like a couple months ago. Look, I, I we know how good of a player he is. We know how good of a scorer he is. He could be one of the best, you know, one day he's going to be. But it was a matter of, does he know that it's going to take everyone else to, to fall? You know what I mean? Like, you have to have 
everyone else is have to be on your side as well. You know, you can go out and score 50, 60 points. Like John said, it could be in a losing effort, but that's not going to push the needle. It's not going to push the ball in the sense of where this team needs to be, where this franchise needs to be. And, you know, it's very telling again, you know, what we talked about in the last couple of weeks or the last, last time we were all on that podcast he did with JJ Reddick, where he's like, man, it's really hard to win. You know, it was, yeah. maybe I overlooked how difficult it truly is because I had some of the greatest, some of the best scores in the league on my side. And, and now that I'm the one leading, I have to make sure that everyone follows me the way I follow them. And I, I think mm -hmm. it just took him, uh, what, 20, 25, 30 games to really get that down. And once he started to ramp up and find that cohesive unit or email rather, find that cohesive unit with, you know, with, with this tight lock eight man rotation, he hasn't let it go. But at the same time, these guys continue to make strides to, to work as a team and continue to, to put out the kind of effort that'll stop top tier talent. Like we saw today. Yeah, definitely. It's different. You know? different dude playing with a different kind of sense of purpose and and putting say, right? together putting together all of that's all of those things that you saw flashes of um on a much more consistent basis mm -hmm. uh, and again uh, uh, that you know it's got to be me sort of thing you know like and i i'll right. take it i want it give it to me and exactly. not just a i'm in a funk so let me shoot my way out of it sort of thing or down which would yourself, always be the thing you know yeah. Right. Yeah, you, you can't get too high, you can't get too low, but you have to be, you have to bring it every game, you know, one way or the other. So if, if that's something that we're starting to see more of and we are, then yeah, I think that that's how you build a winning team around a superstar player. The rest of the pieces fall into right. place. I'm not calling Jalen Brown just another piece. Like, I understand that not just Jason Tatum and, and Brown. Credit to Brown for, for playing today. I actually am really glad that he did play. You know, obviously, I don't want anyone to re re-injure himself, but... <clears throat> this is the type of game where you want to have all hands on deck because you want to see what, what you got, you know, and you want to see what works and what doesn't, especially if you're going to run into these guys again in the playoffs. You want to have some good film to, to base it on. So uh, I think they're going to learn a lot from this game. You know, they'll, they'll have to fix some mistakes that they made out there. It wasn't a perfect game by any stretch. It was an entertaining game. I'm sure there's a lot of things that when they watch the film, they're going to want to do differently. I mean, they did give up 120 points, so it wasn't like this, you know, A-plus all-around game, but by by – you know, I'm not I'm not complaining about the win at all. I'm just saying, you know, there's going to be things that they'll learn. But in order to really learn, you, you got to see your best players out there in those situations. So, you know, the next time they see the guys, Ben Simmons could be on the court. So it's going to look a bit, little different anyways. But at yeah. least they'll have some real, like, concrete evidence of, yeah, we can, we can compete with these guys. Not only can we compete with them, but, hell, we're better than them. So this yeah. is a game where, you know, I think – they already believed it, but I think now a lot of other people might be might start to believe in it too. I know that there's a lot of Celtics fans who are on the on the brink of like wanting to fall in love with these guys, but not wanting to get hurt. Have you ever been there? Uh, and you know, I think a lot Again, of people are, are over that line now. Nothing changes. Everything is like they still have, you know, kind of uh, just razor thin margin for error here with just you know whether it be injuries or just needing everyone you does. know needing performances, you know, needing your best players to perform at an extremely high level because, you know, it's the the drop off is fairly significant. I'm not I'm not going to turn, you know, 18 minutes into the show into what the hell's going on with Derek White or other bench concerns, but, you know, yeah. I will point to what I'll point to one point in this game which was critical was Tatum goes out at about the 4 minute mark of that third quarter. And I'm guessing he was probably going to sit the duration here and come back in the fourth and mm -hmm. probably play the whole fourth. And about 90 seconds later, Celtics looked like they'd never played offense before. And it was a unit that had Brown and white and smart and Tyson, and maybe Pritchard. I forget exactly. And it was, and, and, and you know, uh, Brooklyn went on a little run and he just looked over. He's like, nah, you got to go. He came back in, he played the rest of the game. And right. you know, that's, it was one of those games. From Not the something you can always do, but it was like, I, you know, it was yeah. a, when Tatum wasn't on the floor, things didn't look right. Cause he was literally there. Everything he puts up 41 minutes tonight. Um, but I mean, he did not get a rest. He only sat, he sat 90, he sat 90 seconds, the entire second half. Um, so he, you know, they, yeah, need, it was they a superstar they, type game for him. I mean, they needed to write, they needed to jump on his back and, you know, and, and, and he was able to, he was able to get it done. So that's why it's like, when you talk about best wins, I mean, yeah, it's definitely one of the best wins in a long time. Great team game. I don't know. I mean, they did need 54 points from Jason Tatum. So, yeah, there's still questions about the depth for sure. You know, who's really going to rely on offensively off the bench? So those are questions that, you know, may or may not 
financials too over the next couple of weeks here. But to know that you have a guy like Tatum that can put a performance together like he did today, the entertainment value aside, I mean, this is a, a, a player that I think you're not going to really hear anyone say like, the Celtics need to need to seriously consider making a trade here. You know, I don't think you're going to find many people who feel that way anymore um, because he's showing right now, like he just, you know, he, he's a top, like you said, John, he's kind of in that top 10 category. It's unreal. For sure. Yeah. So, and he's, and again, we, we, we talk about it sometimes, but 24 years old, I know it seems like he's been in, in the league. He seems older because he's been in the league for, you know, what, five years now, but this guy is, still trending upwards and he's already got yeah. four 50 point games. Like his ability to just take over a game. There's only a handful of players in the league that can do it. And a couple of them are on the, on the backside of their careers now. So you're talking about a player who could theoretically be the best scorer in the NBA over the next, what, six, six years or so. Yeah. The, the, uh, the LeBron's 56 got about, you know, got about 12 hours of uh, play and then Tatum <laughs> comes in and drops a 54. Yeah. So, <laughs> Tatum's like 56, yeah, I mean, huh? All right. LeBron, yeah. yeah, right, right. You know, Le- LeBron, that's 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 a name that you want to be in the same sentence as, you know, LeBron, Durant, those guys. Yeah. And, and uh, he's creeping his way up there for sure. Let's bring-